Welcome to the Damp Detectives podcast, investigating the causes of and the solutions to damp and mould in your home. Right, I'm here today with uh, Robert Horn, who's the Managing Director of Damp Detectives. And we're going to be discussing something which you might perceive as being a dry subject, but the, the ironical thing about it is that it's, uh, it's damp that we're going to be talking about. So, Robert, over to you. I mean, I've got a whole list of questions here, but I'm sure you'd like to preface it with... Well, I, I mean, the first one, basically, um, the question that's banded um, backwards and forwards to me is a kind of a statement that there are so many statements out there that aren't that everyone thinks is true, but isn't really scientifically true at all. Mm -hmm. So one of them, of course, is condensation is normally caused by warm air hitting a cold surface. Well, you may have noticed or you may not notice when you're watching um, David Attenborough um, on his world subjects, when they're talking about Antarctica, there's no condensation at all. Um, <laughs> and you might consider that's a cold surface out there. And, <laughs> yeah. and basically, it's because the air is bone dry. On the other hand, you could be going and having a Turkish bath somewhere down the road in your gym, and you'll be there at 40 degrees centigrade, and condensation is streaming down the walls. Now, you can't say that 40 degrees centigrade walls are actually cold surfaces. So the, th the elephant in the room is the amount of moisture physically in the air. And that's the thing that creates the condensation. So there's a lot of little sayings going on, but they're not quite true. And therefore, this causes a lot of problems. Um, a, a, there's a multi-million pound industry working on these kind of sayings. Um, but at the same time, they're not 100% accurate. So that's the reason why that one isn't true. <laughs> <laughs> right no i get it. and I, I i totally get that from using the steam room at my at my gym oh yeah uh, knowing about that you know yeah. as you say it's, it's quite hot in there but the walls are literally streaming yeah, yeah. um i was Absolutely. having a i had a haircut yesterday and i uh the really? chap who yeah the <laughs> chap who he had to cut it a bit a bit too short <laughs> but um he was talking about, I, he doesn't normally cut my hair, but he, I told him I was doing this, yep. uh, talking about the damp. Yeah. Um, and he launched into this slight passive aggressive thing about damps everywhere. The Southwest is damp. It's one of the dampest places in the country. You should move because you can't do anything about damp. It doesn't matter whether you've got the windows open, closed, we've got air bricks. It doesn't matter. It's just going to be damp. That, I, I just nodded because you don't you, you don't <laughs> no. want to antagonise somebody being passive aggressive yeah, with a very just, sharp pair of scissors. Too right, so, might just cut your throat. <laughs> but yeah, well, he could have. He, he had that look in his eye. But that, I mean, tell me. No, that's not right. It's right, right. No, it's not it's right. It's a perception that it's the southwest is incredibly damp. Yes, and we we seal up our homes. Yes, because of the weather. Ah, but you just said so, the word. You've just said that word. Seal up your homes. The, this basically goes back from 1970 uh, and we can't blame a particular government in fact if we wanted to blame somebody we could we could actually go back to Queen Victoria's time okay um, when they started inventing cavity walls um, oh. and so the yeah. point is houses are damp for a reason they're not built damp um, the house that uh, I live in right now is a little Victorian house that was built in the 1890s um, when I moved in, I could see that somebody had done a bit of damp proofing. Um, it, to fix it, it cost me 50 quid. I went up the road to the local building merchants, um, got a bit of piping, um, resolved the issue myself, um, and I've never had a problem since. And the crazy thing about my house, which is only a little three-bedroom terrace job, is the fact that we cook, breathe, shower, do everything with our windows closed, um, we even dry clothes in the house on radiators. Now, okay, I do one or two little things, but the house is able to breathe. And you've, you've just said that we seal up our houses. Mm. And so from, from the 70s, we started to seal up our houses and we've sealed them up more and more and more. And I think this is a total misinterpretation of what the government and saving our carbon emissions and saving the planet is all about. Because saving the planet and cutting our carbon emissions was simply to use less energy so that we didn't produce as much 
um, pollution from coal-fired power stations, that sort of thing. Yeah. So we're losing, we're using less energy, and so we start putting insulation in. Now insulation is great, but insulation only does one thing: it insulates. Many people are told that if they actually put in insulation, maybe they they they're told that their house is cold because they haven't got insulation, um, and their insulation will warm up the house. Well, it won't, because it's not an electric blanket. You don't plug it in. Um, insulation is used on a fridge to keep the fridge cold. Yeah. And if you put insulation in a house, if you don't warm the house up, it will stay cold because it insulates. And therefore, it can be really hot outside, but it can be cold inside because the house is being insulated. So. These are, there's a lot of things going on here where people haven't quite, even, they, we're not talking, we're talking about the professionals here, we're talking about the people who put the insulation in, yep. we're talking about the architects who design the houses, we're, we're talking about loads of professionals who are missing the point um, and bec as a consequence of trying to keep our houses warm, we have set up a series of events that now makes our houses wetter. And that's that's actually the issue. And is that is that the issue in in that it's the sealing up that is doing up. this? Absolutely. And so there should are we talking that there should be you should have uh, the windows open more well, often? Look at the irony. Air bricks, um, <laughs> uh, uh, look at the irony of it. We seal up our houses and then we start putting in extractor fans and we start saying, "Oh, um, you must shower with your windows open." <laughs> Because yeah, your house is sealed up. Okay, well, hang on a minute. Why don't you just take the shower and put it in the back garden and have it out there? Then you won't get condensation. You know, it's crazy that that you have a house and that you physically can't wash, um, sleep, breathe, have a glass of wine in front of the telly, do the things you normally do without having problems in your house. To me, that's not a habitable house. That's not even a habitable flat. You know, there's something wrong. And the thing about, if you imagine, hey, you are cooking your breakfast in the morning and you put a saucepan on the, on the um, cooker, um, say you're boiling your cabbages or whatever, it starts to boil, you put a lid on it. Now, as, as the air in the in the saucepan warms up so it takes more water out of the vegetables and so it builds up pressure what happens the lid starts to lift and the lid will lift until the pressure is released and then the lid drops back down again yep well that's that is a very simple version of what's happening in your house <laughs> so the point is you seal your house up you will simply have a build up of pressure in your house that can't be released then you get condensation and, the, and you get mold. Now, all you've got to do, and I call these safety relief valves, yep. um, and they're not valves at all, but <laughs> basically um, <laughs> you need the ability to release pressure in your house. And there are ways, it's to do with the loft, it's to do with the subfloor under the wooden floor, things like that. Those are ways that you release the pressure. And so all these houses that were built 100 years ago, they were built very well and they used to release the pressure. They used to do it through chimneys. Um, and then we came along and we sealed up the chimneys. Yeah, we said, oh, yeah. let's just seal up the chimney because that's letting the warm air out. Well, it's a load of rubbish. <laughs> what it's doing is letting the pressure out. So <laughs> See, it makes perfect sense. So you're, you're describing my flat, which is an Edwardian flat, not, yeah. not unlike your, yes. uh, your home. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly what's happened. That there are no air bricks they actually put the fascia of an air brick on right but that was to trick me <laughs> because i'm not a builder when yep. i moved it yes uh, it doesn't go right through the wall right i mean how cynical is that yeah but but also the upstairs ripped out the chimney yeah. um, because it was in the way of what they wanted to be the kitchen yes and so, which of course sealed my chimney yes so my flat is, as you say, when it was built, all those releases were there. Yeah, absolutely. Built into it. Yes. We have systematically just, blocked everything up. We just, it just sealed it up. Perfect sense. If only, if only the government would understand that insulate doesn't mean seal. 
Yeah. You know, they're two different words. Um, I, I, I get but, it. But it's gently evolved into sealing up. And we'll get brand new houses. People will move into absolutely brand new houses. And within six months, they're going, I've got mold everywhere. I've got silver fish. I've got slugs. I've got this. I've got oh. that. They're all coming into my house. <laughs> well, slugs are very, very particular things. They will not come into a dry house. <laughs> they're very particular. <laughs> they'll only come in. They'll only come in where there's damp. And the and the great thing about slugs and snails, and I apologize if everybody's having their breakfast, <laughs> is that they use the moisture in the fabric of the building to glide. That makes them lazy. They don't have to secrete any kind of thing to slide yes. on. They can glide on the on the damp air, which is right along the surface of the damp fabric of the building oh. so they will stop they will stop when they get to dry building work and then they curl back and go back again so you can walk into a house and you can tell exactly where the damp is can you go oh look a snail came in here and he walked across the area he hit some dry stuff and he walked back and he went back so he's telling me that snail is telling me exactly where the damp, where the damp is, is and what the limit of the damp is uh, Even, you know, without you using tells meters. me exactly where the damp is in my kitchen now. <laughs> it's behind the sink <laughs> well, it, because ah. and, and the lots little of sludge trail yeah. that you get. Yes, <laughs> and sorry if you're having a breakfast, <laughs> as, we ju as we just said, but is exactly what you say. Yeah. When they come out and yeah. hit the dry floor, yeah. they then retreat. That's right, because, because it's too it's much like hard wall. work. It's the outer wall behind yeah. my sink, yeah. which is damp. Yes. Now you see, the point is. It's an ideal condition for them to live in. We all like, so us as humans, like a nice warm, dry house. Yep. A slug likes a nice, moist area. Damp. That's his ideal condition. Mm. So the point is, um, and lots of people think, okay, I've got to stop them coming in because maybe they're coming in for food or maybe they're coming in for something else. So I'm going to block up all these holes. Well, slugs can constrict themselves in all sorts of ways. So they, like mice but the, and, the yeah, quickest yeah. way of stopping a slug coming in is finding what's causing your damp, stopping it, letting it getting it dry the moment it gets dry the slug will go around to his mates going oh well, don't go into number 10 mate they've dried it, it all up dries a bone oh it's terrible it's like being we'll have to go the, to number 12 in the desert yeah, <laughs> yeah. number 12 is really go to the wet. neighbor <laughs> <laughs> and i'll tell you what i did that uh, uh, again is exactly this what you say why i haven't got slugs now is because i became aware that it was damp really wet and a builder came round and said, whoever did your flat up, this is 15 odd years ago, yeah. they built the concrete path at, in my yard yeah. and they went over the damp course. Yes, and they, so they made and the wall said, damp. That is what's making inside. And so he ta he tanked it. Yeah. You, you obviously know about tanking. I know tank what tanking I'd is. I'd never heard of tanking. <laughs> and it's they drill down <laughs> yes. and form a gutter below Oh, the damp well, that's, yes, that's not tanking it, but that's brilliant. They drilled down for the gutter below. That, the, he went below the damp yep. course, filled it with gravel. Yep, that's brilliant. And it has dried out. Yep. And I haven't got any slugs. There you so. are. There you are. You see, it's, in, it's a fine example of what you're talking about. There's nothing complicated about damp. The irony about damp is that water, there's nothing complicated about water. It's our main element for which we have life and everything on this planet. Yeah. And... The, you can tell I watched Richard, uh, Richard Attenborough. Absolutely. <laughs> so the point is, the irony about it is, water can be lovely stuff that we drink, lovely stuff that we can wash in, you know, swim in, lovely. But if we hit it at 50 mile an hour, it'll kill us. And if it freezes inside our wall, it will split the wall apart. Mm. And if you And if it moves rapidly, it will demolish, it will erode, it will... Concrete Concrete is a lovely target for water because concrete gets eroded away. It may take it a few years. Yes. I mean, to us, 10 minutes is... Nowadays, if somebody hasn't delivered our parcel on time and it's 10 minutes late, to us, the world has come to an end. But <laughs> as far as water's <laughs> concerned, 20 years of gently rolling across concrete... Um, uh, say in a chimney breast or something like that yeah. you can take out all the mortar you can work out a nice little channel we go to Niagara Falls to look at the power of water and to see how it 
digs out, how it smooths the stones, how it mm. make, creates its own valley. The power of water is phenomenal. We've got exactly that coming off our roof. Our roof will produce about a ton, thousand litres of water every time it rains. This comes hurtling down, um, uh, down a drain pipe, going down towards the ground. And in the, uh, this is a classic example. Mm. The, um, the Victorians made the great big pipes out of cast iron. Brilliant, not a problem. So they make these pipes out of cast iron, but cast iron gets eroded by water. So the water comes down at fair speed, and at the bottom in the ground is a 90 degree bend, cast iron 90 degree bend, yep. which then takes it, the water away into the drain. <clears throat> so you'll see lots of houses in your street here in our Victoria thing, where you can see that the cast iron pipes have been taken away and they've been replaced by plastic. But that little 90 degree bend at the bottom, just below the surface, is probably still cast iron. And it now looks like a vegetable colander full of holes. And that 1,000 litres comes hurtling down that pipe and 50% of it goes towards the drain and 50% of it goes into your house. <laughs> because that's the guys a, who that's were... That's an eye-opener, <laughs> isn't it? Because the guys <laughs> who were fixing the pipe didn't bother to look you know, it didn't work. It, they didn't. It, it didn't work on them that the fact that if that's cast iron, the rest of it's going to be cast iron. No, they get down as far so as the ground, chop it off, and stick plastic out on. Out of sight, out of mind. But yes, but they don't fix the problem. All they got to do is replace that ninety degree bend and fixed. Yeah. And so, so many houses we go to, who have problems in their front lounges, right in the corner behind the telly, we get terrible damp, terrible mould there, and there's a downpipe coming down there, right in that corner. Nine times out of ten, that's what the problem is. That's interesting. But it's simple. It's yeah. simplicity in itself. I think I need to check. <laughs> <laughs> I need to check a downpipe because I had damp coming in through where the cable um, entered behind the telly, as yes. you said. Yes. And there was damp, and I, the, they've just replaced all the doings of the the cable, the entry point, everything. Um, and I think it might be banging your head against a brick wall in that what they haven't done is got to the root of the problem, yeah. which is probably what you've just said. Yes. Is the downpipe outside. It may well They be. just said, oh, oh, the damp is coming in through the hole yeah, well, where the cable comes in. Wouldn't there. be that much. And, well, exactly. Yeah. Oh. But there you go, you see. Oh, it's dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is, you've just depressed me. <laughs> I thought it had all been fixed. No, no, no worries. But that's... They're very simple to put right, these things. If you have any questions or queries for future podcasts, then you can email robert at dampdetectives.co.uk and you could be part of the next show. The Damp Detectives podcast, investigating damp and mould in your home. Robert, returning to the principal thing of condensation, yeah. um, something I've been told is that when I shower, because I only have a wet room, which yeah. is a, a shower, I don't yes. have a bath. Yeah. Um, that when I shower, I ha I should leave the windows open and the doors shut. <laughs> I love that, it. <laughs> I've heard, you know, but that's what it seems a, a perceived reaction. Yeah. But is that is that even remotely true? I mean, well, it's, well the point is, it's it's the sealing up job. Um, the thing is, though, um, I've been researching recently on some council websites. Their advice to um, their tenants and somewhere I'd love to know where this originally came from but they have a list of how much moisture is produced by doing various things yeah and one of the things they came up with they've come up with is that a shower uh, every person who has a shower produces one and a half liters of water in the air right okay so I'm going to now pull out my props so though those of you who are listening to me won't be able to see this little jam jar. <laughs> it's, a, it's a jam jar with about a, an eighth of the jar is well, water. I was going to say it's about a centimetre yep. of this jam jar yep. is water. Now, that's 140 millilitres water. I've got a little shower room, OK? Um, so we put a little shower room in our house. It's two metres by two metres. You walk in, it's a shower. Two metres by two Mine metres. Mine too. And... I calculated using the instruments that we have in damp detectors, and I hate to plug that one. Um, is the fact that <laughs> is the fact that 
I monitored how much moisture was physically in the air when it was 100% saturated while I'm having a shower. Because my shower doesn't have any windows and it doesn't have any extractor fans. And it doesn't have condensation, it doesn't have mold. And we've been there four years. So the point is, there we are. Here's a little jam jar and it shows you 140 milliliters of water. Now that's the amount. Now, according to the council websites, I'm now lifting up <laughs> a two liter bottle of water, a two liter bottle of milk, which we um, we had this morning with our, with our cornflakes. And um, two thirds of that is water. Yeah. Now there's no way that a shower two meters by two meters um, can physically have that amount of water in the air. You, even if you went into the Malaysian jungle um, at 30 degrees C and it's 100%, Humidity. you still won't have that amount of water. The point is, I actually then sat down out of interest to calculate um, what one and a half litre, how big the room would have to be to hold one and a half litres of water. And it works out at 25 degrees centigrade the room would have to be eight meters by five meters now i've measured my house and that would take out my lounge my dining room and half that, my that's, kitchen that's my whole <laughs> ground floor. so that's a pretty that's a pretty good shower room um where would you find a shower in that size probably in buckingham palace um <laughs> but you wouldn't find it in in my house in my street so that is a completely wrong fact. And the other experiment I did was we sim I simply showered. I put these little loggers, one in the shower and one one meter outside the shower in the hallway. So upstairs in the landing. Yeah. So have my shower. Um, and we did this for four days. And in the graph, you can quite happily see that the graph goes hurtling up very, very wet um, when I have my shower. Then I open the door and leave the door open and there's no windows there's no extractor fans in my shower so all that wet air is now coming into my house okay well the the logger one meter outside the shower shows a little peak and then it drops straight back down again and disappears so the point is you see what we're saying is that and here i'm holding up my little honey jar again this tiny amount of water in a tiny area can be significant but if i then open the door and I'm now exposing this tiny amount of water to my three bedrooms, the landing, downstairs, the lounge, the dining room, the kitchen. Yeah. It's nothing. It has no effect whatsoever so that, on the moisture level in the house. So that's how you keep your space, which as you say, has no window nope. or extractor fan. No. Nope. But that just by opening the door I open the door. You don't get and I don't get or condensation because it dries out incredibly rapidly. Uh, but I do do one thing uh, in the evenings. What we do is we dump our air. So I open a window in the bedroom and I open a window on the other side of the house for two minutes and remove all the wet air that we've done with our washing, our drying, drying clothes, Cooking, you know, in the winter. Wh whatever. Yeah, drying clothes in the winter. I mean, um, our last house was a little bungalow. And just an experiment, I got um, eight uh, pullovers, got yeah. them all wet in the washing machine, got them all wet, hung them out to dry on a little frame in one of the bedrooms. Ah, oh, right, that was, a, that was my next door. question, yeah. was about whether you can dry stuff yeah. indoors. Go well, on. I, did it uh, i dry i dried it in this room double glazed window shut the door and next morning went in and the all the pullovers were dry and there was no condensation on the window and we're back again to the original talk about sealing up or releasing the pressure yep um but every house that i'm in the pressure can be released because I, I know how to release it. I know what to look for to make sure. And our problem is in sealing up our houses, as you quite rightly said, over the years, they, they build a house 100 years ago, and then over the years, we raise the path a bit. Somebody comes in and says, I'd love to have a patio. So they build a patio. Um, or I can't get, I've got a garden at the front, I need to park my car, so we'll knock the wall down. Concrete it. Concrete it, bring the car in. Uh, and 
Yes. And you see, if you go back, if you go back to, well, go to London, go to London, they're going down level upon level oh, upon level, yes. and they get to the Middle Ages. So they get to the Middle Ages, <laughs> they get to the Roman times, the Romans, um, and then we each each generation goes up goes up a few mil um, as we add you'll never find that we're actually going down you'll never see our cities sinking our cities are constantly building up and up and yeah. up and up so this is what we do with our houses the council will come along outside and repair the pavement they won't take the pavement back down to where it was they'll add tarmac along the top so everything goes up higher and higher and higher and so in the end we start going over the damp proof course we start creating it's like suffocating the house yes that's it we start creating our own problems and this is us just simply adding things all the time robert one thing i need to ask um another uh, probably a fallacy is that putting furniture next to a wall will cause condensation behind that furniture uh, fallacy is the right word for that one thank you <laughs> <laughs> um that's another one that lots of people, even using thermal cameras, um, have looked at the walls and gone, well, when you put a piece of furniture next to a wall, that bit of wall is not as warm as the other bits of wall. You know, you're not allowing the air to go around the back. Okay. But we're missing the elephant in the room again. The thing is, if you put dry furniture next to a dry wall in a dry house with dry air, you're not going to get mold or condensation. Um, the, the elephant in the room is moisture. And it's all down to the amount of moisture. So there are we've got furniture up against walls. Um, one of the things we do when we're doing surveys is we pull furniture away, and just if somebody says, "Oh my, you know, um, a house by a surveyor has come along and stuck his meter on the wall and said, oh, that that wall is wet. The my meter is singing its head off." We take the furniture away and actually just check the furniture because sometimes you'll get. Um, house buyer surveyors their meter will hit something on a wall and it will go oh this wall's wet yep. um, pull the furniture away the, the the furniture tells you if the wall's wet or not because if the wall's wet it cools the air down and therefore it can create condensation behind the furniture and therefore the furniture absorbs it and you start to see mold on the back of the furniture yep. um, so as far as having furniture next to a wall, the question would be, why is my furniture getting wet? Is it because the air is wet? Or is it because the wall is wet? And you may not notice that the wall is wet, but the wall might just be physically wet. Well, that makes perfect sense. And Robert, thank you very much indeed. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much. And the coffee wasn't bad either. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, if you want to be part of the next podcast, Email your questions to robert at dampdetectives.co.uk. The Damp Detectives podcast was presented by John Isles. Copyright Damp Detectives. Produced by Fresh Air Studios.